Omoyele Shawori, a political activist and Sahara reporter's publisher, has revealed why his immediate younger brother, Olajide Shawori, was killed by suspected kidnappers in Edo State. It was reported how Olajide was shot dead last Saturday morning by headsmen and kidnappers on his way from Igbenedio University in Edo State, where he studied pharmacy. In an interview session on Zoom with Tony Falola on Sunday, Shawori said the reason why his younger brother was assassinated along the Lagos Benin Expressway on Saturday was because he, Shawori, was held up in Abuja. Shawori was restricted from traveling out of Abuja as part of his bail conditions after he was arrested for calling for a revolution protest against President Mohamed Buhari's led government. The political activist explained that he is from a family of 19 and since the death of their father, he, Shawori, has been the one taking care of his younger siblings. But due to his incarceration by the Nigerian government, his younger brother was under pressure to provide for the huge family, which was what prompted the disease to be on the road as early as 6 a.m. when he was brutally murdered. Shawori stated this while reacting to the heartfelt condolence messages expressed by participants at the Zoom live session. Thank you very much to everyone who reached out. At this stage, the crime has two suspects. The first murderer is the primary murderer. The states, and we know them, the second murderers are those who have not been found, but we know they work on behalf of the state. I also want to make something known today that I'm the first son with 16 siblings, and I used to be the shield over everyone, but since I was held up here in Abuja after the kidnap from Lagos on August 12, 2019, and eventually kept in open prison here in Abuja, the pressure on my brother to cater for younger ones led him to be driving around twice between the school and his businesses on that very dangerous road. Otherwise, I don't think my brother would be on the road at 6 a.m. had it not been that he was under pressure to cater for our younger ones and the needs of the family. He automatically became the breadwinner of our huge family and he discharged his duties credibly well, Shouwere said. The assassination comes a few months after Mayele Shawori was reportedly shot by police officers during a protest at the Unity Fountain in Abuja. This must have been very heartbreaking for Shawori. Just keep praying God will give him the grace to bear the loss. President Mohamed Buhari has held um, Shawori in Abuja for a long time. Now that was um, his bail conditions that he will not leave Abuja. He will not go anywhere. And Shawori is giving reasons right now that... Um, um, he used to be the breadwinner of the family, but since he was held in Abuja, he can't do much. His immediate younger brother took over that role and that responsibility and started um, acting on his behalf. And the reason why he was shot dead, um, um, he gave the reason as why he was shot dead was um, because of his constant um, attack on Buhari's um, government. Now, um, ever since um, the police released the report that um, the brother was killed by Fulani headsmen, um, it, it, one other aspect has not been ruled out that um, the government hand is behind this. We cannot just say, um, because um, the Edo State Commissioner of Police gave a statement, so they gave updates on the killings, and he was stating that um, it was just a case, a case of, uh, of being victim of a circumstance, that the kidnappers were actually operating, they were about kidnapping five persons from a bus. So these two were unconnected. Shore's brother was a lone traveler. He was in his vehicle alone. And uh, the, the, the people, the kidnappers wanted to kidnap, they were people who were stranded. Their bus broke down. So they were stranded and Amoyele ran into them. There was just a case of a, a, a victim of being a victim of circumstance. But um, Shore is not really now the possibility that the hand of the federal government is on this. Because what Buhari is doing right now is that everyone that speaks against his government, everyone criticizing him, everyone calling out uh, to an end of bad government. Ever since uh, uh, even his arrest, all of the restrictions they've put on him, it has not even made um, Shore give up. Uh, one would think that, okay, since Buhari has been on him uh, and a lot has been happening, he will just give up. Shore has been speaking. He's been speaking, always putting out words out there. It has not stopped him from speaking. And what uh, Buhari's government is known for, they want to silence everybody. They don't want anyone to speak because they know that by the time we keep speaking and spe keep speaking, the international community will come to our aid. They will come to our rescue to see all the evil that is going on 
uh, inside Buhari's government, all of the injustice, everything going on. So Showere is uh, was just explaining after he actually appreciated everyone that has reached out. A lot of people have reached out. You know, a lot of condolence messages have been sent to him. Edo State Governor Godin Obaseki sent his and um, promised that um, actions have commenced, that they are actually um, liaising with other security agents to ensure that they find out the culprits. But our country, would they find they, if <laughs> the, the reactions coming from Nigeria is that uh, who do you want to find? Is it the government that is behind this that you want to find? It's just like up till date. I don't know if anyone has that answer. Up to date, we have not seen who was responsible for the Lekki Gate shooting. No one has been brought to book. No one is facing anything up till now. So what are we what are we talking about? So this this government is truly, truly evil. It's truly wicked. Omoyele Showere is stating right now that uh, his brother was killed just because of uh, uh, what President Muhammad Buhari has against him. And it's so painful that if not that... Uh, he was not held down in Abuja. He would have been the one sh uh, um, shouldering all of those responsibilities. But because Buhari locked him up in Abuja, his immediate younger brother had to step in. That was why the immediate brother, he was doing two, he travels twice on that road. So he was doing his business as well. And also the school he was, uh, uh, the, the school he was attending, University of uh, uh, Igbenedio at Ukadade. Very, very painful. It's so sad. We just keep praying that God will give him the grace to bear the loss. I know a lot of people have been reaching out to him. So this was just in an interview, Zoom interview that he had. He was just expressing himself, sharing his heart, how he felt. That now they've taken the, the one that caters for the rest of the family. That he comes from a very large family. Since his father passed away, he's been the breadwinner. But ever since President Mohamed Buhari locked him in Abuja, the younger brother had to step in. What next will they do again? Wari's government is full of intimidation, oppression, and all sorts. Very unfortunate. Fulani headsman, that is what they put it on. The same Fulani headsman that President Mohamed Buhari is guarding, the same Fulani headsman that he doesn't want to leave our communities, the same Fulani headsman. And this is the same thing. The reason why Shawore was held in Abuja or is being held in Abuja, the same thing Shawore has been kicking against. The same thing Shawore has been talking about. That the insecurity in this country, Buhari is sponsoring it. Shawore has been complaining of insecurity. This is the proof that something needs to be done now. Well, guys, let's say your own take down below in the comment section. Thank you once again for staying tuned. And please don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. Till I come your way again with more updates. Bye.